and NATO-style military alliance in the Middle East. This is what Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu proposed while speaking at the United States Congress on July 24. An alliance, with the two allies the US and Israel at the helm, aimed at countering none other than their common enemy, Iran. America and Israel today can forge a security alliance in the Middle East to counter the growing Iranian threat. All countries that are at peace with Israel and all those countries who will make peace with Israel should be invited to join this alliance. In his controversial speech, Netanyahu outlined a vision for the broader Middle East taking a cue from what the US did after the Second World War by creating the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO. The Israeli Prime Minister sees the military bloc as an extension of the Abraham Accords, a normalization treaty signed in 2020 between Israel and Arab nations Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates and mediated by the US under the Donald Trump regime. The new alliance I envision would be a natural extension of the groundbreaking Abraham Accords. Those accords saw peace forged between Israel and four Arab countries, and they were supported by Republicans and Democrats alike. We could call. I have a name for this new alliance. I think we should call it the Abraham Alliance. I want to thank you for giving me... This isn't the first time Netanyahu has invoked the idea of such an alliance. This is a revived Israeli effort to gather new friendly regional states under its leadership and within its sphere of influence. An Axios report suggests that the Israeli military's chief of staff, Herzi Halevi, met with senior generals from several Arab countries in Bahrain back in June this year. Under the auspices of the US Central Command, which is an American military unit responsible for defending and promoting US interests in Middle East, Central and South Asia, military officials from Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Egypt allegedly participated in the meeting. US General Michael Eric Kurilla, the commander of CENTCOM, who took part in the meeting, met Halevi and held a discussion on what they think are recent regional challenges, as well as the strengthening of the strategic partnership in the region against the Iranian threat and Iran's proxies in the region. The US has been working for years to forge military cooperation between Israel and Sunni Arab states that share an alignment against Tehran. With a formal military alliance seemingly impossible under the existing political situation and especially amid Israel's relentless war on the besieged territory of Gaza with a majority Sunni Muslim population, the US instead has been working to build an informal regional air defense cooperation and the Abraham Accords gave a big boost to the plans. In another significant move, Israel in 2021 was moved from the European theater to the US Central Command. A taste of what that alliance could achieve came in April when the US coordinated regional efforts to thwart a barrage of missiles and drones that Iran fired at Israel. The Iranian attack came after Israel conducted an airstrike on Tehran's embassy in Syria's capital Damascus earlier this year, killing 16 people including eight officers of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC. Alongside the US, the UK, France and Jordan, some Gulf states, among them Saudi Arabia, also provided intelligence that helped with interceptions. Netanyahu has been advocating the Abraham Alliance for a number of years with Israel's push to normalize ties with its Gulf neighbors, seen as the first step in this direction, as pointed out by observers. Israel can only dependably rely on the US Central Command and Washington for weapons and other support. Dr. Mehran Kamrava, who is a professor of government at Georgetown University's Qatar campus, told news website Sputnik, this is because the Israeli lobby is quite powerful in the United States, particularly in Congress. With both parties and all of its major figures, from Presidents Joe Biden and Trump to Vice President Kamala Harris, 
declaring themselves Zionists or otherwise voicing strong support for Israel. Domestically, the Israeli Prime Minister remains mired in a deep political mess. He has been facing pressure from the families of hostages and the left wing that want the captives held by Hamas back through a ceasefire deal. <laughs> Pressure from the Israeli army, which has been saying that it is impossible to defeat Hamas, which is an idea. Hamas, Hamas is an idea. Whoever thinks we can eliminate Hamas is wrong. And pressure from his right-wing coalition partners who want to resettle Palestinians outside Gaza and annexation of West Bank. In this situation, only a continuation of the war and playing up the Iranian boogeyman can save Netanyahu, according to Kamrava. And a NATO-like alliance in the Middle East with Israel in a leadership position will also bolster the country's war ambitions. There are already more than a dozen alliances out there, with their purpose ranging from collective defence and intelligence sharing to attempting to enforce what critics call a certain indispensable nation's hegemony on the rest of the world, hinting at the US. Five Eyes is the oldest actively functioning modern multilateral alliance in the world and constitutes an intelligence sharing block of five English speaking countries Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, and the US. It was founded in 1943 during the Second World War. The alliance's modern role includes the monitoring, surveillance, and sharing of communications worldwide, including of member countries' own citizens. Former NSA contractor turned whistleblower Edward Snowden has characterized the Five Eyes as a supranational intelligence organization that does not answer to the known laws of its own countries. The Inter-American Treaty of Reciprocal Assistance is a collective security pact between the United States and countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, signed in 1947. Under the treaty, an attack on one member is treated as an attack on all and responded to accordingly. Bolivia, Cuba, Ecuador, Mexico, Nicaragua, Uruguay and Venezuela have quit and denounced the treaty, leaving the so-called Hemispheric Defense Pact full of gaps. In its current state, the bloc has a combined maximum strength of over 3.31 million military personnel with over 2.84 million belonging to the US. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization is one of the largest military alliances in the world. Formed in 1949 ostensibly to defend Western Europe against a Soviet attack. NATO originally consisted of 12 members Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the United Kingdom, and the United States. During the Cold War, the alliance expanded to include Greece, Turkey, Germany, and Spain. In 1999, it began a controversial expansion into Eastern Europe, spreading to the Czech Republic, Hungary and Poland, and then Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Albania, Croatia, Montenegro, North Macedonia, and finally Finland and Sweden. The combined strength of the alliance is approximately 3.42 million personnel. Although the bloc regularly calls itself a defensive alliance, pledged to defend any one of its 32 members if they come under attack, 
NATO has been repeatedly used as the go-to tool to enforce Pax Americana, particularly after 1991. There are several other alliances including Peninsula Shield Force, Compact of Free Association AUKUS, Collective Security Treaty Organization, Russia-Syria-Iran-Iraq Coalition, Nordic Defense Cooperation, Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, Central European Defense Cooperation, Lublin Triangle, Alliance of Sahel States and so on. With Netanyahu pitching a new military alliance, this time in the Middle East, it remains to be seen if Arab nations will go against their population's will, which is to boycott Israel over its war on Gaza, where thousands of civilians have been killed. And join hands with Tel Aviv to work against Iran.